In this video, I want to talk about a few things that are important to understanding biochemistry. So I call this video the Biochemist's Toolbox, and it includes understanding redox reactions, anabolism, and catabolism, which makes up metabolism, um, and reaction coupling. Understanding these concepts will help you understand different pathways, including glycolysis, the TCA cycle, the electron transport chain, and a bunch of other different things. So the first thing I want to cover is oxidation and reduction. You probably already probably already learned about oxidation and reduction in a general chemistry class and if you recall oil rig or Leo Ger, uh, oxidation is the loss of electrons and reduction is the gain of electrons so those are this is kind of the chemistry definition this first thing that I've written here um, in biology it's not always easy to see in, in particularly in biochemical reactions it's not always easy to track uh, electrons and where they're going so there are these two other definitions here second and third which I've written in green that are a little bit uh, sort of helpful in kind of um, allowing us to understand oxidation and reduction reactions or to visualize them a little bit better. So oxidation reactions are reactions in which more bonds to oxygen are created, okay, or more bonds to a more electronegative atom. Okay, so oxygen is an electronegative atom and actually the name uh, oxidation comes from this idea that you're creating more bonds to oxygen in an oxidation reaction whereas a reduction is you're, you have you you reduce the number of bonds to oxygen so you have less bonds to oxygen or less bonds to an electronegative atom um, and I'll kind of um, give examples here in just a moment um, oxidation can also be seen as a loss of bonds to hydrogen or the loss of hydrog hydrogens, whereas reduction is sort of the gain of hydrogen. So let's kind of see how these examples work with this. Here we have some sort of uh, alcohol, some R chain, um, and this carbon here, and then this alcohol group, this OH group. Now, if if we turn that this compound into um, an aldehyde here, then what we have is we've created here, we only had one bond to oxygen, right? Now we've got two bonds to oxygen. This carbon here has a single bond to oxygen, whereas here we have a double bond to oxygen. So this blue arrow indicates an oxidation reaction. Okay, I'll just abbreviate that as oxid. Okay, so here, and in addition to that, right? So that's sort of definition number two: more bonds to oxygen. We had one, a single bond. Now we have a double bond. So that's an oxidation reaction. Another thing is that here we had a hydrogen. On this, on this O right here, but over here we've lost that hydrogen, right? So we lost that hydrogen. This is an oxidation reaction. Now notice that the reverse reaction, which is indicated by this arrow here, would be a reduction reaction. Okay, so we're reducing the number of bonds to oxygen and we're adding this hydrogen here. Okay, um, now. This is important to keep in mind, especially when we think about these things here, NAD plus and NADH and FAD and FADH2. NAD plus and FADH are both what we call um, coenzymes, which are basically things that um, non-enzyme non components that actually help an enzyme catalyze a particular reaction. So these things are coenzymes. And they're going to be very, very important in redox reactions and the pathways that we're going to talk about. The first one being glycolysis. So here, um, NAD plus is going to NADH. So what happens? Well, it's picking up electrons, right? So if NAD plus plus electrons, that means it's already being reduced, okay? In addition, NAD plus adds this hydrogen here to become NADH. So this reaction, this forward reaction indicated by this orange arrow, again, is a reduction reaction because we are gaining electrons and we're adding this H. And normally, normally this electron thing is not really shown. It's just shown as NAD plus goes to NADH. But if you see that NAD plus picks up an H, you can assume that to be a reduction reaction. And of course, on the flip side, going backwards in this reaction would be an oxidation reaction, right? Going from NADH to NAD plus and this H plus and, and these electrons, then it's losing the electrons, losing the hydrogen. That's oxidation. Okay, another one is FAD. So FAD going to FADH2, picking up hydrogens, picking up electrons, that's of course a reduction reaction. And here, going backwards, right, losing the hydrogen, losing the electrons, that's an oxidation reaction. So I put all these blue arrows being the oxidation reactions and the orange arrows being the redu reduction reactions. Um, in addition, 
what I want you to keep in mind is that both of these here, right, since they, um, these are both in the oxidized form, okay, because they, um, if you think about NADH and FADH2, they're carrying the hydrogens, they're in the reduced form. Now these are going to be very, very important. These things will go go through and become reduced and oxidized back and forth in different pathways, and you should be familiar um, with what's going on in each one. So I've put this example here of an enzyme that we're going to be talking about later called lactate dehydrogenase. And actually the reason I mention that is because um, whenever you're thinking about a dehydrogenase enzyme, you should consider dehydrogenase, you should sort of associate dehydrogenase with redox reactions. So um, in this case, if I, if I see an enzyme that's named dehydrogenase, I automatically think, okay, it's a redox reaction, something was oxidized, something was reduced. So that's that, which is something I wanted to mention here. Oxidation and reduction always occur together. If something is losing electrons, something, has, something else has to be gaining those electrons. Okay, um, so um, in this reaction here, let's sort of scroll down just a bit, we're going from pyruvate to lactate. Now, if we number these carbons just to make things a little bit simpler on ourselves, one, two, three, that's really small, but one, two, three. What's going on? Well, in this reaction, we're going from pyruvate to lactate. Notice that this carboxyl group here, nothing changed. So whatever happened in the reaction did not happen at that first carbon. Over here, this methyl group on the third carbon, again, nothing changed. The change occurred at the second carbon. We went from two bonds to oxygen, right, this carbon is bound once to this carbon, once to this carbon, and twice to an oxygen. That same carbon here is still bound to this carbon and this carbon, nothing changed there. But now it only has one bond to oxygen and one bond to hydrogen. So we reduced the number of bonds to oxygen and we added hydrogens. So those, this pyruvate was reduced to lactate. So pyruvate, let me write that here, pyruvate was reduced to lactate, to become lactate. So if it was reduced, something else was oxidized. In this case, we're going to think about NAD plus and NADH. So what would have been oxidized? Well, if pyruvate was reduced, then we must have gone from NAD plus, or excuse me, NADH to NAD plus. How do I know that? We're going from NADH to NAD plus. The reason I guess that, and instead of saying NAD plus to NADH, is because if this thing, if this thing was reduced, then something must have been oxidized. NADH is the reduced form, so it's the form that can be oxidized into the oxidized form, the NAD plus. Okay, so this thing here is being oxidized; it's losing that hydrogen. This thing here is being reduced. This carbon is gaining hydrogens. Okay, so hopefully that sort of makes sense. This is why I mentioned that oxidation and reduction always occurs together. If something is losing electrons, something else has to be getting the electrons. If something is being reduced, something else has to be oxidized. So it's very important to kind of keep that in mind and be able to tell whether you're going to have an NADH going to an NAD plus or an NAD plus going to an NADH. Just as a heads up, this reaction is actually uh, lactate fermentation and in, in, it occurs in animals. We'll talk more about that later. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to score back up here just a little bit. And I'm going to talk about anabolism and catabolism. Both of these make up um, metabolism. So metabolism is just the whole idea of like chemical reactions in our body. It's made up of anabolism and catabolism. Anabolism, if you think about, when I think of ana anabolism, I think of anabolic steroids. Anabolic steroids help you build muscle. So anabolism is sort of the building of biological macromolecules from their monomers. So these are, these are building things, building, making macromolecules like proteins and clayic acids and polysaccharides and um, poly liquid, lipid polymers. So um, anabolism is the building, okay? Um, in addition, anabolism, anabolic pathways are reductive pathways, okay? And we'll talk more about that um, in the future, but I want to sort of get the definition across to you now. Um, and catabolism is the opposite. It's the breakdown of, of um, biological macromolecules into their monomers. So it would be like breaking proteins into amino acids or, or um, polysaccharides into monosaccharides, okay? And these are oxidative pathways. So how do I remember that? I just remember ARCO. So ARCO is actually a, like a, a gas station. Um, anyway, it helps me remember. 
Uh, so I, th I remember anabolism is reductive. An anabolic pathways and reduction go together. And then catabolism and oxidation go together. So, um, so anabolic pathways um, usually involve the reduction of a compound, whereas catabolic pro pathways involve oxidation of a, of a particular compound. So that's another idea to keep in mind when we think about different pathways. For instance, um, <clears throat> the glycolysis is, uh, which we'll talk about shortly, is is about breaking glucose down into pyruvate. So taking a glucose and breaking it down. Um, so for breaking it down, that must be a catabolic process, which means it must be an oxidative process, and we'll find that that is the case. Okay. This last idea I want to mention briefly is the idea of reaction coupling. Reaction coupling is simply um, if you pair up reactions, some reactions that are energy requirement, energy requiring, and some reactions that are energy producing. Um, this is a theme in biochemistry that we see. So, for instance, ATP hydrolysis, right? Uh, we we use ATP in our bodies for energy. How exactly do we do that? ATP is hydrolyzed into ADP and a phosphate group, which you're probably already familiar with. What's interesting about this reaction, the reason why it can be used in our bodies for energy is because the delta G of the reaction is negative, right? Which means that it is a favorable process, right? <clears throat> or a spontaneous process if it's negative. Basically, we can we what happens in our bodies is that we take this favorable process, this energy releasing process, and that energy that is released is used to power the production or the used to power reactions that are positively um, that have positive delta G's, which are unfavorable. So if we have this particular reaction going from A to B, we need to create this product, but that requires energy. Basically, what ends up happening is that the overall delta G of this reaction, you'll notice, is negative 1.3 kilocalories. So this is a spontaneous, right, and favorable. Well, I don't want to confuse, make that confusing. Let me just underline it instead. Um, the overall delta G is negative. So what did we really do here? What we did was we used a spontaneous or favorable process to power the production or power the reaction that is unfavorable. This unfavorable process wouldn't occur spontaneously, but if you couple it with a spontaneous process, the overall, the overall delta G is um, spontaneous. Okay, so this is an, again a theme that we'll see in biochemistry. Okay, so I uh, hope that was helpful and keep all these different things in mind when we talk about different pathways. Thanks for watching.